In this lecture, we're going to talk about how to configure routing for an Angular application. By the end of this lecture, you're going to know how to configure and set up the Angular router. And you're also going to know how to handle redirects and also something called catch all routes in Angular as well. So far in this course, we've been using Plunker to edit and run files. Now Plunker is perfect for simple demonstrations, but doesn't work so well with routing. So for this section, it's actually better to download the Plunker files and run them locally. So this is the Plunker for this lecture. If you want to follow along with me, just simply download the Plunker, unzip it, and then open up a terminal and cd into the folder where you downloaded and unzipped the Plunker files. Once you're in the folder, we need to run a local web server. Now, if you've got Python installed, and if you have a Mac, you will have Python installed. You can just run Python to open up a simple web server. Like so, python-m simple HTTP server. Make a note of the capitalization, it's important. And once that's running, it will create a web server that you can access through 0000, 000 port 8000. Now, if you don't have Python, then you can use a node based local web server called HTTP server. To install that, we'll just type npm install HTTP server and then dash G to install it globally. And then once it's installed, we can just run HTTP dash server. Now both applications will tell you what host and port to visit. For HTTP server, it's this host and port. So now we just open up a browser and visit this host and port. So now we can run the code locally and view the results in a local browser. If I open up the console and you look at the console here, you can see it's still doing pretty much exactly the same stuff that Plunker was doing. So we're using system.js and transpiling TypeScript in the browser. The only difference being is that we're running locally on our computer versus being run from the Plunker domain. And since we are running locally, I'm going to be using my favorite IDE, WebStorm, to edit the files. Now to explain routing in Angular, we start with an application very similar to the one we created in the section on HTTP. I have a component called search component, which lets us perform searches using the iTunes API. And just as a quick note, we're using JSON P to bypass cores. And also we're using promises instead of observables to keep things simple. In addition, we also have a header component with a selector of app header. And this has two menu items, one called home and one called search. Now the stylings and the markup here are from the Twitter Bootstrap UI library. And we also have a home component with the selector of app home. And this just displays a simple welcome message. It just displays iTunes search app. And our last component is our root app component. In this component, I'm rendering the header. And then underneath the header, I'm currently rendering the home component. And this div with this class just adds a little bit of spacing between the header and the home component. And that's what we're seeing on the right hand side here. This is the header at the top. And underneath it is the home component, which just displays the message iTunes search app. 
Now this is what I want people to see when we visit the root of our domain, the home page, as signaled by just slash. We have another configuration where under the app header, I want to show the search component. I'm going to refresh the page. And if you're doing this locally, remember to press shift and then click to reload because we want to do a, do a deep reload and not a shallow reload. And so now we can see that we're showing the header plus the search component underneath. This is the configuration I want to see when the user is visiting the search URL. And that's our goal with routing. We want to have the home component rendered when the URL is the root URL with just slash. And we want the search component shown when the URL is slash search. So to set up this routing, we first need to include some imports. So I'm going to import the root and router module from Angular router. Then the mapping of URLs to components we want displayed on the page is done via something called a root configuration. And at its core, it's just an array which we can define. I'm going to add it just above our ng module. I'm going to store our roots on a variable called roots. And the type of that variable is roots. Roots is an array, an array of objects. The path property describes the URL this route will handle. And the component property is the name of the component we want to display when the URL in the browser matches the path. So when we're at the root URL, which is defined by no path, we want to render the home component. And when the URL matches search, I want to render the search component. Now that we've defined the roots, we then install these routes into our application by importing something called a router module into our ng module. So specifically, we add it to the imports of our ng module. And it's called router module. We call the function for routes. We pass in the routes, the routes we just declared. And then for now, we're just going to pass in another object as a second parameter. And this is going to have use hash as true. Now we'll go through the meaning of use hash when we cover path location strategies later on in this section. But for now, just know that this prepends the hash symbol to all of our URLs. So now the home URL would look like this hash and then slash. And the search URL will look like this hash slash search. So now we've configured our application. So if the user navigates to search, we want the search component to be shown or if the user navigates to the root URL, then we want the home component shown. But to tell Angular where exactly we want the component shown, we need to use a directive called router outlet. This directive tells Angular where it should insert each of those components we've defined in our root. And so I'm inserting it in our app component where I was manually inserting the components just previously. 
And now if I rerun our application, I'm just going to refresh it. Here. You can see that by default, it's taken us to the home page. And now if I type in search and I press enter, you can see now it's rendering the search component on the page. And again, if I delete search and just press enter, it's now rendering the home component on the page. So it's essentially replacing this router outlet directive with either the home component or the search component, depending on which URL we're visiting. Now there's a couple of other ways we can configure our routes. For example, we might like to change our routes to add some redirects. So the redirect to property describes the path we want to redirect this user to if they navigate to this URL. So now if they navigate to the home page, it's going to redirect the user to the home path. And for the special case of an empty URL, we need to pass another property called path match and say the property is full. So Angular knows it should be matching exactly the empty string and not partially the empty string. And I've also added another redirect from find. So slash find will redirect to slash search. So now if I refresh our application, you can see it redirected from the home, the slash, the root URL to slash home. And also if I try and go to slash find, you can see it redirects us to slash search. And we can also add a catch all route by using a special path notation. So if a path has two star characters, this is going to act like a catch all route. If we try to navigate to a URL and that URL doesn't match any of the other routes in our route configuration, but we have a double star route, it will then always match the double star root. So our double star root is saying to show the home component. So if I just try to type in just another root that we haven't configured, so slash foo. Oh, let me refresh the page first. And now if I try to go to slash foo, it will show the home page. And regardless of whatever we type here, it's going to show the home page. So in our example, we're just showing the home component, but in a real application, we probably would want to show some sort of error page, like an error 404 page. So to summarize, a route in our application is defined by a mapping of a URL to a component or a redirect to another URL. We can create an array of routes and then install them in our application by importing them into our ng module using the router module for root function. In this lecture, we've shown you how we can configure routes and manually type in the different URLs in the address bar to make the application render different components depending on which URL the user visits. Next, we'll show you how you can navigate between these different routes in Angular without having to manually type the URL in the browser address bar.